Thanks, Melissa. Uh, and thank you for inviting me. I'm very pleased to have this chance to tell you about my research. Sounds like some of you are doing similar work. Um, so I'm interested in how genomic methods can help us to understand uh, the role of parents in the development of uh, offspring anxiety and depression symptoms. And I think the, hopefully the takeaway of this talk is that genetics isn't only something that we need to control for when studying the environment, the home environment, but uh, we can actually use genetics to in a way index environmental effects of parents. So uh, it's quite difficult to work out how important parents are uh, for their offspring's emotional development. And uh, I'll talk about three key challenges. And the first one really is, is genetic confounding. So parents don't only expose their children to a social environment, but they pass on genes. So if we're looking at associations between particular parent characteristics and child anxiety and depression, uh, without using genetically inform informative designs, we don't really know for sure whether that represents uh, a causal environmental effect. So uh, luckily, there are quite a few designs that have been available uh, for decades in order to control for genetic uh, sharing within families. And uh, the classic design is the twin design. And uh, this is me and my identical twin and a load of other twins who are participants in the twins early development study. So the classic twin design compares the resemblance uh, of identical and non-identical twins to infer uh, genetic shared environmental and non-shared environmental influences. And uh, the shared environmental effect is really the uh, component of interest here. And it tells you uh, the overall latent effect of uh, any, any non-genetic factors that make siblings similar to each other, regardless of their uh, twin zygosity. So that tells us a bit about the overall importance of parents, although it's not uh, limited to parents because it could include any factors that make siblings similar to each other, like uh, peer, common peer effects or neighbourhood effects. So secondly, we also have the children of twins design. Uh, they're not my children, they're the children of other uh, twins uh, in the uh, TED study. But uh, so the children of twins design uh, is really elegant, powerful design looking at how specific parent characteristics associate with offspring outcomes after controlling for sharing of genetics. And you control for genetic influences uh, using the following logic. So if my identical twin has a child, I will be as genetically related to that. So if uh, my twin and her, and her child resemble each other more in their anxiety or depression symptoms than, uh, than I resemble a child, that suggests there's something about the, the social environment that share that's uh, contributing to the genetic similarity. Um, and then the adoption line, similar to the children of trans design, uh, tends to draw upon uh, measured phenotypes in parents and, and uh, uh, obviously uh, adopted children aren't genetically related to their parents. So phenotypic associations between parent and offspring traits uh, are, are then um, most likely to be explained by environmental effects. So those are three key designs for separating out um, the effects of parents from the effects of uh, genetic inheritance. But then even once we've used these designs, they're, they're great, but they have limitations as well. So uh, particularly for the children of twins and adoption designs, you have to decide what are the salient aspects of parents to measure in the first place. And that's not necessarily easy. How do we know uh, what to measure, when in the child's development to measure it, uh, what's the best uh, measurement tool, etc. And once we have measured something, uh, it usually accounts for only a tiny proportion of variance in child anxiety and depression. And it doesn't give us a, a global picture of the total effect of, uh, of parents on children. So uh, actually the, the twin design can 
uh, can speak to that because the shared environmental component is like a latent total effect, but that's not specific to parents. Uh, so thirdly, a key limitation is that it's very, very difficult to unpick the direction of causation, causation. so especially in these studies where we're looking at um, associations between parent and child uh, traits, it's quite hard to tell whether it's any association is actually driven by uh, a, a child with greater risk for anxiety or depression evoking a certain parental response. So uh, I think that uh, several new genomic methods can tackle all three of these problems uh, and these methods are uh, within family genomic designs. So I'll be mainly talking about this one called Relatedness to Equilibrium Regression, which I've applied uh, to understand uh, effects of parents on childhood anxiety and depression symptoms. So uh, this estimates environmental effects differently from the three designs that I've just mentioned. So here the environmental effect is uh, termed genetic nurture. So that's uh, the environmentally mediated effect of the parent genome on the child phenotype. So that captures, uh, in this model anyway, it captures any heritable uh, characteristics of the parents that are tagged by, by common SNPs that operate through the environment to affect the child phenotype. And we know it's through the environment because we've controlled uh, in this method for uh, genetic variation that's transmitted to the child and then that's acting directly on the child phenotype. Um, and it's important to note that by direct, uh, I just mean that the genetic effect stems from the child's own inherited variation acting on their own trait rather than stemming from their parents' genotype. So a direct genetic effect can still be mediated through the environment, especially for uh, something as complex as anxiety and depression. Okay, so just to go into a little bit more detail about how this method works, it's, it's uh, it's basically an extension of the GCTA Gremmel approach for estimating heritability. So that approach is summarized by the equation at the top of this slide. So, so Y is the phenotype and GCTA Gremmel decomposes variants in the phenotype into genetic and environmental influences. So that you've, you've got the genetic component, which is basically the variants explained by the additive effects of common SNPs. And then the environmental component is everything else. So that includes uh, genetic effects that aren't, uh, aren't tagged by uh, current DNA arrays, but also shared and non-shared environments. And then, uh, so that standard model just uses data on a, on a single generation. So say you just estimate the SNP heritability of child depression using data, genetic and phenotypic data on children. But when you also have uh, genetic data on parents, you can apply this RDR model and you can split out those variance components into additional uh, kind of interesting factors. So you've got uh, the variance in, in phenotype Y uh, and then you still get this uh, direct genetic effect, the SNP heritability uh, of, the, of the phenotype. And then secondly, you estimate uh, the variance in the child's environment that's explained by the parent's genotype. So that's the genetic nurture effect, uh, which is also known as an indirect genetic effect of parents. And, uh, and then thirdly, we have uh, a component to allow for covariance between the direct genetic effect and the genetic nurturing effect. Uh, and then finally, a residual. So if you're interested in practically how to implement this method, uh, you you need uh, the outcome measure, and so you, you have like a um, a phenotypic uh, correlation matrix among all the children, so their phenotypic resemblance for say anxiety, and then the first bit of the model is just the same as the standard GCTA Gremmel approach, where you're looking at the extent that random genetic uh, differences in the population can explain phenotypic uh, variability. 
so that's just using the child genotypes. And then you add in uh, a matrix representing the genome wide genetic relatedness of the parents. And before doing that, you, you calculate the mid parent uh, genotype value. So, this, uh, so the genetic nurture effect that you get from this model is therefore a combined effect of both parents. So again, that's an environmentally mediated effect of, uh, of both parents' genomes on the on the child trait and then and then thirdly you you have a covariance uh, matrix so i implemented this model in the uh, norwegian mother and child cohort study which is a, a pretty amazing huge uh, cohort study with with genotyping ongoing um they're, they'll eventually genotype everyone but i used in the study the interim release uh, which includes i think 98 a thousand genotyped individuals in total and then because uh, as part of my uh, supervisor's sub project where he's linked uh, the MOBA data to uh, national Norwegian registry information on twin zygosity because of this linkage um, excitingly I was able to also run a pedigree model which is the first time this RDR model which is relatively new has been directly compared to a more uh, classic uh, approach without using genotype data in the same in the same sample. So, turning to the results, I, I wanted to see uh, the extent that genetic nurture effects uh, influence anxiety and depression symptoms uh, in childhood at age eight, and um, these these symptoms tend to have quite an early onset. Uh, so it's particularly important to understand uh, any environmental and genetic risk factors occurring early in life. Um, and so I had a sample of 11,500 uh, complete trios with information on child anxiety outcomes. And uh, I'm just going to show the results uh, in this diagram. It's not like a, um, a completely accurate path diagram. I just think that it helps to understand um, the kind of structure of the results. So for anxiety symptoms, the results were quite uh, disappointing and, and simple, where there was basically very little signal coming from the genomes of the children or the parents. Um, but then turning to depression symptoms, it was a slightly different story, where there was a relatively uh, high uh, SNP depression symptoms at age eight. So 19% uh, of the variance in child depression symptoms was explained by the direct effects of genetic variation operating directly in the child. Um, and then this is what I was really interested to find. Uh, almost as large as the direct effect was a genetic nurture effect. So uh, uh, environmentally mediated effect of, of both parents genotypes uh, on on the child's uh, depression outcomes, so explaining 14% of the variance. And then a, uh, a finding that was initially quite surprising uh, was that there was negative covariance between the direct and nurturing genetic effects on, on child depression symptoms. So that suggests that uh, genetic variation that increases risk uh, of depression symptoms the child when present in the parents operates exposing way uh, to reduce risk of depression symptoms. I'd be interested to know if anyone has any uh, suggestions about where that could come from but uh, once I looked in the animal studies literature uh, direct genetic effects have been quite extensively uh, is actually quite common to find uh, negative covariance between uh, child and well, offspring and parent genetic types like parental care and gestational weight and uh, and things like that. So it does fit with the animal literature, but it's quite unclear uh, for this phenotype how it could happen. I've been thinking that it could be something to do with the fact that it maternally outcome perhaps mothers who are more likely to 
report elevated symptoms of depression in their children are also more likely to uh, behave in a way as to alleviate any symptoms of depression. Okay, so um, the hope is clear already. It's a, a new kind of attribute of this type of design that you don't have to select uh, a parent phenotype uh, to measure. Uh, and you just index the, eff the effect of parents using the parent, parent genome. Even though that's an attribute of the study, if we want to take uh, this approach further and use it to try to identify um, kind of causal environmental effects of, of parents on their children, we need to work out what are the specific mediating parent characteristics. So uh, my approach to try and address that was to uh, include data on maternal anxiety and depression symptoms, uh, add that in as a covariate, with the rationale being that if maternal anxiety and depression was mediating the genetic nurture effect that we saw, uh, the genetic nurture effect would then attenuate uh, when, when maternal symptoms were added as a covariate. And that is uh, what we found. So the genetic nurture effect went from 14 to 5%, which is quite a large attenuate, um, and the components didn't really change. So I think that, that just uh, that there's mediation by maternal anxiety and depression. Uh, but I want to emphasize that uh, these, these, the total genetic nurture effect and the mediation effect are really uh, very proximal parenting related effects. They could be explained by slightly more. So it could be, uh, for example, uh, maternal depression symptoms do relate to specific parenting practices which directly increase risk of depression. But it could also be that maternal depression symptoms are indexing other aspects of the home environment or the wider social environment of the child that are um, that are kind of uh, more indirectly leading to uh, child depression risk. Okay, so I'll just quickly discuss the comparison pedigree results which didn't use genotype information but just relatives um, and phenotypic data on the children. And so uh, as you can probably tell, instead of having squares to, to represent that I've observed uh, genotypes of child and, and parent, instead I've got circles to suggest that these pedigree models gives us latent effects of uh, the child genetic effects and the shared environmental effects. And we can also see that there's no green um, correlation between the genetic and environmental effects, and that's because the pedigree model assumes that they're not correlated. Uh, whereas in the RDR model, you have this advantage that you can see how much uh, they're correlated. So we've got anxiety symptoms on the left, depression on the right. And uh, if you just focus on the blue estimates to begin with, that's the shared environmental component. They map well with the RDR results, where there was no uh, particular effect of the shared environment on anxiety symptoms, but there was for depression symptoms. Uh, and in contrast, the heritability results from the pedigree model didn't really match up with the RDR results because uh, the heritability is really similar for anxiety and depression here, whereas in the RDR model, uh, we had a missing heritability problem for anxiety, but not for depression symptoms. So uh, it's unclear what could cause that, but to me it could be uh, that uh, there may be more um, genetic by shared environmental interactions going on for anxiety than depression. Those would get picked up in the pedigree model, but not in the uh, direct genetic effect in the RDR model. Uh, it could also be if there's more rare genetic effects on anxiety than on depression. Okay, so some limitations are that we don't really know how uh, these three uh, and these three factors listed here are affecting the RDR model. It's, it's uh, fairly likely that assortative mating and population stratification could inflate genetic nurture effects. Um, I've got some uh, new results from a polygenic score uh, study that will be coming out as a preprint today, um, where I've compared 
different methods for estimating indirect genetic effects, which have different uh, assumptions and biases. And, and uh, that comparison uh, suggests that for educational attainment polygenic scores, um, uh, designs such as this can include a sort of mating and population stratification, but we need to check whether this is uh, the case for anxiety and depression. Uh, measurement could also be a problem. We've relied on uh, maternally reported anxiety and depression symptoms in children and uh, genetic nurture effects could be inflated if they're actually capturing uh, mother's genetic effects on their own symptoms. But because we didn't see genetic nurture effects on anxiety, uh, I don't think that that's particularly likely to be the case, um, but it does warrant further investigation when we have uh, child reported data in MOBA, which is coming up soon. And then as with uh, most uh, current genomic studies, unfortunately, the generalizability is limited. We've only included individuals with European ancestries and uh, there's been a lot of selection and attrition in MOBA, uh, meaning that uh, lower SCS groups might be uh, not represented in this study and genetic nurture effects could be moderated by SES. Uh, so it will be important in the future to, to check whether these results are um, consistent across the population. So uh, the extensions of this um, RDR type approach and similar polygenic score type approaches that I'm excited about are really um, extensions that draw upon uh, twin and family studies because the twin design and other extended pedigree designs um, are really uh, sophisticated and over the years have been extended to uh, answer very nuanced questions about um, changing influences across ages and uh, influences of additional relatives so I'd particularly like to uh, add other types of relatives into this kind of model and see whether uh, indirect genetic effects of siblings are, are of any importance for childhood depression symptoms. Uh, and as I hinted at already, perhaps incorporating moderation aspect into the models to see whether uh, genetic nurture effects are contingent upon uh, certain social or area characteristics. So, uh, that's the end. So thank you very much for listening and uh, thanks a lot to my uh, co-authors, especially to Ivan Destrom and Tom and McAdams who, who are senior authors on this, on this paper. So um, I'm really happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Rosa.